Councilwoman Bettino? Here. Councilman Phillips? Here. Councilman Casella? Here. Supervisor Thurston? Here. Would everyone please rise or do a virtual, you know, pledge allegiance to the flag? All rise. Yes. Aye. Pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag, flag of the flag, United States, States of America, States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Boy, connection breaks up. But anyway, okay, thank you. Please be seated. Uh, the uh, next items will be relating to the agenda. Uh, after you know some discussion, communication with Jim Horan, there are a couple uh, items that don't need to be on the agenda because they're going to remain tabled until we decide you know to raise it. One is concerning the resolution 2029, uh, based on Jim's advice, that remains tabled until such time as someone wants to raise that. Uh, again, that relating to the uh, roof uh, at uh, Carnwath. Uh, the other one uh, is related to the appointments that we'll be discussing later in executive session. And uh, Jim advises that since they've already been tabled, uh, then until after there's discussion, we decide to remove them from the table and to vote. It does not need to be uh, readdressed at this point in time until after the executive session. Okay, so that's just clarification, correct, Jim? That's correct. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? I'll make, make a motion to open the... Please. It's to adopt the agenda. Sorry, to adopt the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. abstentions? Seeing on motion passed. The next item is a motion to acknowledge the minutes of April 13, 2020. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Okay, and second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Seeing on motion passes. The next item is the uh, motion to open the uh, public uh, meeting portion. Uh, do we have a motion? I make a motion to open the public portion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We nays our abstentions. Seeing on a, a motion to open is passed. Uh, Mr. Town Clerk, have we received any uh, questions, comment from the public per our notice uh, on our website? Yes, we received two emails. The second one appears to be spam. It's four pages long. So I'll just read the first. And the question from Randy Ross is, is there a resolution to commence construction at Spookill Park, specifically the bathroom area that is part of the county grant? If not, can it be placed on an upcoming agenda? Okay. Since we don't have it on the agenda item, I'll just briefly you know, address it. Um, and I don't see Steve free. Oh, Steve said he might be late because he had a union bail uh, meeting. You know, so we, we had a discussion uh, with the uh, consultants and uh, Steve Frazier, uh, the uh, department heads, uh, during our weekly call last Tuesday about that. And so Steve and CPL were going to look at, you know, what needed to be done under the grant language and only under that grant language so we didn't lose it uh, to comply with the grant. And then when we are able to uh, break out of uh, the uh, lockdown, you know, we would start addressing that. So, uh, you know, Tim, have you, you know, had any discussions with Steve yet on that issue? Uh, since we spoke last week, we uh, left it that we need to have a site meeting. Uh, we've prepared some architectural plans. Uh, we've prepared the site survey to implement the grading for the ADA parking. So things are in motion. Uh, our strategy was to review the scope with Steve and see what could be done in house by town forces to uh, help keep the costs at bay. So that's and based on your discussions. It was my understanding you would report to the board on that, correct? Yes. Okay. So I think that's where we'll stand, unless there's other questions that you know, based on you know Tim and Steve looking at the uh, grant uh, requirements, which is really related solely to ADA. It has nothing then to do with the interior, but it would be the repair uh, with respect to the bathroom facilities, parking space, uh, fence uh, would be included within that based on the grant uh, stipulation. 
right? We were trying to break it up into three phases, phase one being the parking arrangement, phase two being the ADA bathroom upgrades, and then phase three would be the overall site improvements around their uh, play area and field area. This grant is only a grant, is a reimbursement grant, so monies have to be spent. Uh, and Sailor has indicated some flexibility, but would really prefer us to have it uh, done or at least started, you know, this, uh, you know, summer, fall, whenever we're able to start, you know, doing that. And it was 100000 wasn't it, Dick? Correct. Yeah, that's right, Chris. The uh, other grant you'll recall, which uh, still has also further discussion, was relating to the uh, restroom facilities and septic uh, out at uh, Challenger, you know, field. Uh, so uh, it's Inspiration Field Challenger League, mm -hmm. and uh, that you know, you know, Tim and um, uh, you know Steve and so forth will be looking at that further. I know they looked at some of the questions uh, that were asked uh, by Patina's father. You know, so I think, you know, Tim can give a further report at next meeting and so on. Right? Right. We've, uh, the town has executed the forms for the health department submission. Uh, one of the things is looking for an adult size changing table, which we've uh, identified one and confirmed that it'll fit in the building that we're looking to you know, inspect. So okay. I think that was the last kind of loose end. We had. Right. Okay. Uh, and, uh, any anything else, uh, Joe or that Joe? That, any? that was it. Just that one item. That, that was, was the it. one item. Okay. Yep. Uh, seeing no further items, so I have a motion to close the public portion. So moved. Second. A motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Uh, the uh, next item is I'll just give a, a an update. Uh, as I've done in the past uh, for the town, and welcome to our you know, residents that are watching tonight, uh, our second uh, you know, live meeting via digital you know, technology, so welcome everyone. Uh, we've uh, continued uh, to see uh, some uh, additional activity with respect to COVID-19 you know, and uh, the uh, infection rates, although there seems to be some uh, slowing or plateauing uh, the numbers that came out today show that over the last week we've had uh, an 18 percent growth in the number of confirmed cases active cases have also increased by 13 percent the good news is that the number of hospital uh, stays has dropped by 11 uh, and uh, in fact as uh, the county executive said on a call earlier today uh, that uh, the good news with respect to hospitalizations is that there uh, looks like that uh, some uh, number, uh, lesser number, not everyone in the hospital is on a ventilator now. So there are some numbers that uh, don't require ventilators. Also, the number of beds uh, that have been available in the uh, three hospitals in the county uh, are not filled up to capacity. The uh, number of uh, recovered has grown since uh, last week of uh, 100 by 172, uh, and the tests have increased, the testing has increased 17% uh, to around 13,500 uh, based on the report. The one uh, you know, negative uh, that is additional to those numbers is that you know, Wappinger has a report today related to yesterday's confirmed figures of 157 uh, confirmed cases. Uh, that's an increase of uh, seven uh, that were reported on the day before uh, numbers. Uh, but we've been actually within the relative range of the mid to uh, low 150s uh, is uh, where it's been really over the last uh, particular week. Uh, the uh, uh, unfortunate uh, situation is that, as we all know, unemployment you know, continues to rise. Last week, we saw you know 26 million people now you know that have uh, lost employment filing for unemployment, and so we are very sympathetic you know to uh, those uh, that are suffering in that way. Uh, well, another point I uh, want to make sure people that are on the phone uh, call or watch
watching or on uh, television understand is that while the presidential primary in New York has been canceled, uh, the governor announced that he was canceling the presidential primary, the remainder of local primaries continues. And uh, what has been uh, allowed is that going forward, anybody that applies, uh, whether it's in person or by mail, will be able to obtain an absentee ballot uh, going you know, for the election. So no one will be required to, uh, you know, to vote physically at the polling site. And related to polling sites, there will be a consolidation, which the Board of Election will be uh, pursuing uh, you know, over the next couple of days and make an announcement. You know, which, so the standard of polling places will uh, no longer uh, be uh, intact for this uh, primary. Uh, but you know, we will be able to vote, uh, and uh, that vote will be done by absentee ballot, or you can appear uh, physically at the meeting. Our town services do, you know, continue uh, to be addressed uh, proactively, and all the departments are continuing to uh, uh, remain, you know, functional. Uh, a couple of updates relating to that. Uh, starting this week, in fact, tomorrow night, uh, the ZBA uh, Zoning Board of Appeal will be meeting uh, via Zoom, just like we are right now. That meeting will start at seven o'clock, 7 p.m. And uh, this is information for accessing it is on the website, as well as the opportunity to submit questions uh, to the ZBA, just like you're able to do for this particular meeting. So go to our town website, uh, that, uh, you know, Wappinger, uh, town of Wappinger, ny.gov. And you'll see it right on the first page, you know, where we have it uh, highlighted. Now, the second uh, one is that the planning board will also be resuming. That will be on May the 4th. Uh, and uh, that will also be at uh, 7 o'clock for the pool meeting. But there's a workshop meeting that will also be uh, live uh, at beginning at 6 o'clock. Similarly, you may submit questions. I believe the agenda has already been posted. Uh, out there so you can go and look at that. Our next town board meeting will be a regular meeting on May the 10th. Uh, we're you know continuing to look at uh, and work on uh, what we will be you know, planning you know for as uh, we eventually reopen and uh, we are looking at uh, various programs that are still continue to be done digitally. Uh, Jessica Fulton you know, put together some music, uh, programs that are available on the Recreation Department website. Uh, I want to mention that uh, uh, at my request, some residents actually prepared uh, some cloth face masks and also caps uh, that you can wear. I have uh, 90 uh, that are available. Uh, the face masks already gave out some, so if any of our board members uh, wants any, I can drop them off to your houses, or if anybody on this uh, listening to this can send me an email, you know, then I'll be glad to, to uh, uh, provide those. If not, then, then we'll uh, get it into, get it into oops, some reverberation uh, into uh, whether uh, it's uh, Bill Beal and his organization or our fire departments uh, in order to make them available. But please, you know, contact me if you're interested in uh, doing that. Uh, so, again, town residents, which will be, you know, recognizing, and we have others, of course, in the local area that are continuing to make uh, uh, masks and other PPE available. Uh, I, I do want to express, you know, on behalf of the board, our deepest uh, concerns are, you know, we do mourn and grieve you know, very much for people that have lost their lives in the county, also outside of the county, friends and family members of friends, you know, and we you know, continue to... Uh, stand, I think, in solidarity with you and our businesses, schools, organizations going forward. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank uh, everybody who's been on the front lines, uh, including our own Councilman Bill Beal and helping at the uh, you know, county you know, level and getting uh, very valuable PPE and other goods and services out there you know, to help our residents. In fact, he's also been able to help the municipalities you know, source uh, product, you know, through the county organization and uh, 
Bill, we really do on behalf of the town and all of our residents. They appreciate your help, you know, the county executives and others, you know, for, for that service. So uh, we're continuing to plug away uh, the call today with the county executive. Uh, everybody's working on a plan and looking at how do we uh, emerge from this fog of pandemic. So stay tuned. We'll be addressing that more in the days and weeks, weeks ahead. Anybody have any, any of the board members uh, like to make any comments at this time? I just want to thank you again, uh, Supervisor, for your leadership. Uh, this is unprecedented, unchartered territory here, and uh, I am confident that our town is, uh, uh, is, is showing leadership, which is, which is good. Uh, from the PPE perspective, I know that the county, uh, my team at the county has provided our town with uh, uh, some PPE uh, for our staff members. And I did get a request today for additional uh, PPE for uh, town uh, essential businesses, as well as uh, others that are uh, affiliated with the town of Wabaker. So that should be uh, received tomorrow, uh, but ultimately, uh, grateful for the day-to-day -day, uh, oversight and management. Thank you. And thank you, Bill, because I think Sandra submitted our order, you know, this afternoon upon receiving word and it was immediately feel, uh, filled. So uh, appreciation to the staff there that's doing that. And I know it's... Uh, Certainly. Been, it's, uh, it's day 51 for the, my team uh, working every day. And uh, thank you for the uh, kind words. I'll pass that on. Yes. And, uh, in fact, I think Bill's not necessarily on video because he had to stay late unexpectedly at the uh, emergency operations center. You know, so thank you again. And thanks to everyone here you know, for addressing uh, residents' uh, issues on a very real, real-time basis. Uh, all deeply appreciated. Uh, that, that's uh, all that I have to say at, at this point in time. Anything else? If not, we'll move into some of the discussion topics. Okay, uh, the first, uh, and Steve, yeah, I see Steve, you're on there now. Um, why don't you uh, talk uh, about uh, the uh, town park signs and what, and Jim, I think, you know, Jim had some uh, legal you know, points too. So Steve and Jim, why don't you take over and talk about the signs issue? Okay, um, which signs is it that you wanted to speak about? Well, I think first it's the town park signs, you know, the general, you know, nature, uh, you know, remember we have a number, well, we have several different parks, correct? You know, and uh, I think you can address it generally. We had had discussion previously. I think Jessica had made a, a proposal uh, and uh, that was relating to our recreational parks. You know, Jim was going to do some further research, but we've also since then had uh, some other uh, concerns that have been raised, you know, such as ATV, uh, four wheelers, you know, dirt bikes, so forth, uh, you know, on some of our town properties. Uh, um, if, if you want, I'll, I'll address the issue. That's fine, Jim. Go. So, um, with respect to you know the issue, um, this was raised, I guess, probably at least a year ago, um, regarding the outdated nature of, of the signs at some of the parks that are out there um you know after kicking this around for a while um the the code um the town code regarding um the rules for parks has not been it was an ordinance that was adopted back in 1986. it hasn't been amended since then um and uh it lacks um a number of topics um that probably should have been addressed, but never were. Um, and it, it basically, the, the um, ordinance that was adopted um, covered basically two areas, the hours that the parks were open and um, the use of motor vehicles in the parks, but it really didn't address any of the other issues that you have in, in, that have uh, come up over the years regarding parks, for example, um, dogs, um, the um, other um, type of uh, situations where if there's someone who may want to have a, a horse, some of the parks might um, lend themselves to use of uh, uh, riding horses. Uh, there's nothing in our uh, code that addresses people hunting in parks. Um, 
And um, we've also had the issue with respect to ATVs um, in some of the lands uh, that the town owns that have been de dedicated for park purposes. Um, one of the things that um, came up um, recently was an issue regarding um, people driving ATVs on a property um, out um, off of Robinson Lane that was uh, dedicated uh, to the town as parkland as part of the Black Watch subdivision. Right. Um, and um, we've had um, a, uh, a Dick um, worked with um, CPL and uh, Joe Cavasini this uh, when shortly after um, uh, Dick became supervisor, um, he had a colored map which um, identified some of the parks. Um, I know he had developed it uh, in coordination with Joe uh, Cavasini, and um, it's been refined, and I'm sharing that now on the screen. And I think everybody on the board has gotten a copy of it uh by email, and then we're printing out, Tim's printing out some copies too. So um, the areas that's shown in green are uh, town parks um, that are actually, you know, used as parks. Um, but some of the areas that are um, kind of in the, in the top or tan color are actually, some of them, not all of them, are lands that over the years have been um, dedicated to the town as park land, but have never really been developed. Um, but technically, um, for our purposes, they're treated as parkland. Um, up in this area here, this is the property where there were the complaints of the ATV. Um, but the, these properties, all, all three of these properties up here along Sprout Creek are dedicated as recreation lands. Um, so we have a number of parks um, through the town um, that have never really been developed, um, but they've been given to the public town to be used as parkland. Um, so one of the things that was discussed was um, while we're updating the rules, we really need to address, um, in addition to our parks that are developed as parks, how to treat these lands because um, they really um, should fall in that category. Obviously, they're not going to, they may not have the same hours of operations or what can be done on them, but technically, since they're dedicated to the public for park purposes, they may be used as, um, they may be used by the public. Um, they have the, the legal right to do that. Um, so um, that was one of the things. Right now, um, we looked at whether or not there was any um, hours for individual parks, and we can't find any record of um, any action that um, would, was taken uh, changing um, the hours for parks, so which is a concern particularly with respect to Robinson, uh, the, the park out on Robinson uh, Lane because um, that park is lighted and is used as, at night. Right now as it's uh, drafted, um, the um, the hours of operation is from one hour before uh, dawn to one hour after sunset. So there, there was, um, I think there was consensus from the board um, when we talked about this previously, um, that the hours should be from dawn to dusk. Um, but one of the things is that we need to have some consensus as to how to use parks that are lit. Um, and my recommendation is that um, at least with respect to some of the parks, we probably should have special rules um, for parks. Um, there's there's no um, differentiation between uh, the parks that um, any of the parks that we have, but uh, Schlatt House Park, Lords Field, Robinson Lane um, are used in slightly different ways than some of the parks. So um, it might be appropriate. Uh, also, Carnwath um, is used differently. So um, one of the things in adopting park rules that would probably make sense is um, if we're going to have different, um, we may uh, consider having different rules for different parks, which are used differently. I know historically there has been, you know, some use of Carnworth for events at, at, at night. Um, I know there's been discussions about um, potentially using Carnworth uh, 
with the amphitheater up there, which would be used at probably for concert in the evening hours. Um, so um, also uh, we had a discussion with uh, uh, soccer. Um, they were using the fields out at Rockingham in the winter time um, at uh, night. So you know, those are the things that um, you know. It's it's pretty easy to say parks would be from dawn to dusk, but it's the the odd cases that we we probably need to look at as well. So, so Jim, how do we? I mean, we, you're going through a lot of information here, but how do we we come up with something that we can get out there and, and start posting signs out there or posting a couple of common signs because. We've been talking about this for a while now, and it just seems like it's going on forever. And, and we need to do something. And residents are calling us. They're asking us to go out there. They have some real issues and concerns, not only about ATVs, but, but other things. And why isn't it as simple as you put a sign together for us, give us a, a template, and we'll figure out how to do it, and we'll put something together, and we'll agree in you know, two weeks, four weeks, whatever it is. But well, how, well, how do we move forward? What would happen is we'd have to adopt the, we have to adopt a local law um, to, to change what's on the books. So, okay, so how do um, we do that? It, you know, so we would, you know, introduce it. So, I mean, the easy, the easy part is, you know, dawn to dusk. I mean, that's easy. Um, okay. But, you know, there's issues with respect to one of the complaints was with respect to dogs. No, you... um, and, you know, how to treat dogs because, you know, certain parks, um, Right now, the way the town code reads for dogs, and again, it's not specific to parks, but it's townwide, is that a person um, is allowed to have a dog off a leash provided that they maintain control over the dog. There was a discussion about limiting, um, saying that a person could have a dog in a park provided it was on a leash, um, but I know in Cornwall, that's not, you know, people have, um, you know, allowed their dogs to run. You so, are right. um, so, you know, if, if, if the board wants to put a restriction on that says you can only have a dog in a park on a leash, in order to enforce that, we have to codify that. So, um, you know, so that's the, that's the issue. Um, right now, you know, we don't have right. You know, one sign fits all. One, one sign fits all. I mean, it, you're going to have a lot of different things. So you're not going to be able to put up one gigantic sign that has all these rules. Different places are going to have different restrictions, right? Right. So, I mean, again. So why can't we get a simple sign that goes up there, up from dusk to dawn, whatever it is, and get that sign out there and get them out there immediately? It shouldn't take long to do. Then we start working on some of the things like the door part. We'll, we'll be talking about this for six months. Right, we need to. I, now we have been we've been talking about it for a year. Can I say something, please? Sure, go ahead, please. Okay. Okay. We have multiple parks, and should, all the parks have come up for having the same guidelines. Right back, buddy. Back. So why can't we put something together that's a generic, and then when the parks are different? We can adjust it to those needs. But right now, we're just together by all parts. I mean, that's where we can start. We need to have it done relatively quickly because hopefully things will be better and people will be going outdoors. And right now, we have no signs up. And, so, and they're outdated. And we do get, you know, as Al said, and I fully agree with him, you know, we, we have a lot of concerned residents where this keeps happening. Let me think out of the box. I mean, Jim, you know, please don't shoot me or anybody shoot me, but we have an immediate problem that needs to get fixed, but it looks like it's going to take some time uh, based on the public hearing process, uh, which is fr frustrating. Is there a way that I can use my executive authority, you know, during this COVID-19 to issue a proclamation to say that for the period that this is in effect before it's lifting, that we will have these temporary emergency signs? I know that things like that have been done before, particularly under Joe Ruggiero, uh, but is that something we could do to try to address the problem and in the meantime get a public hearing, you know, schedule? Uh, that will address this so that next board meeting we would have put on the agenda to, to do that. Uh, is there a way that we can address this uh, that way or perhaps some other way where we think out of the box? 
Well, we have I mean, running wild. We have ATVs. We have all those issues, right? Yeah, I mean, right now the ATVs are prohibited. So, I mean, if you want to put up a sign that says, you know, park closed, you know, dawn to, uh, you know, an hour before dawn and an hour after dusk, no motor vehicles except on roads. I mean, that's right now what the what what the what the rules are in effect. You can put a sign up that says that. So well, they can go out and get yeah. some cheap signs that say no motorized vehicles right now. Yeah, I mean. Okay. So. so, I mean, so yeah. how, how do we get them? I mean, we'll be talking about this again for the longest time. How, how do we get that done? Can we do it today? I think Dick had it? the best idea. Go to Home Depot and get get yeah. some of those signs for two dollars or whatever. Can, you know? can Steve Frazier get them? I don't know. Let's. Steve, can you get them? Yeah, well, I would say Steve Frazier is responsible for the parks if the board okay. is agreed and whatever small amount of money is spent or we get something, I don't know if Dutch's ProPrint and so forth are open, but yeah, we have those signs at uh, you know, Home Depot of some nature that we can you know, add something else on it you know, for yeah. some of these issues. But the ATVs are not the only issue. No, that's right. You have to list other things besides... Just putting up a temporary sign addressing ATV. I think what we're trying to do here, Angela. I, I think what we're trying to do, Angela, here is we're trying to trying to correct the problem we see now. There's a lot of it, and it's it's a temporary fix. And as Dick said, you know, in two weeks or whenever the next meeting is, we'll have a better idea. But start getting signs up, otherwise it'll be two weeks later. Nothing will be done, and the ATVs and whatever else is out there is going to continue until we do something about it. And, and the dog walkers that let them run without their control, you know, that it sounds like we can say we could deal. We could deal with right now, you know, and Jerry, I, I know. Agree, but, but that needs to be part of whatever we put up. Agreed. Not just, hey, I understand there was a problem and there was a, you know, a problem with that, but that's been going on in all the parks. I've had that at Castle Point numerous times when I brought this up a year ago. Yep. I brought up the fact that the signs needed to be updated. So just putting up one sign addressing one problem, I don't think is going to fix a lot. If we're going to put up temporary signs, let's post the things that are most important. We can always revise them. Is it is it fair to say that there's no motorized vehicles allowed in parks anyway? Is that Jim? Isn't that the rules? Yeah, they're, they're not they're not permitted except for in a parking area or on a road. Right, so why would we have to put signs up then? Exactly. I mean, I understand the the area that I think Al has a problem with, which people don't realize is actually parkland. I get that. But relative to um, you know, I'm, Cardwap, I, I, I'm not so sure. I mean, can, we make, can we make new rules on the fly like this, or do we have to? Because I was at Cardwap this weekend, and there were two separate people letting their dogs run, and they had them under control they weren't running crazy you know they were just running so jim says that that's allowable bill you know it's some that we've seen i know i've seen them uh, joey's seen them maybe steve has where they are running without control in fact come up and you know kind of annoy you so i agree with you you know and i think steve is saying i mean jim's saying that those under the code out of control we can do something and i know jerry uh, uh, owen has done some taken one or two people to court right so then back yeah, to I think to Al's specific problem, most people probably don't know that that's town parkland. And I don't think it hurts to put up a few signs just to discourage motor vehicles there. And from talking to the sheriff's department, unless it's posted, they're not going to do anything about it. They can't yeah, catch so them half the time anyway. So, so I've had extra patrols go out there, Bill. Yeah. Um, you know, the sheriff's department's been out there and... You know, again, we're not trying to take away people's freedom, but that's that's town property, and you know, you got to be respectful of the town property. And right. if you put a sign out there, maybe what it is, it says, "We all know about it, but maybe they don't." So if you post a sign, maybe it, it kind of reinforces, "Hey, you shouldn't be doing this." That's all I'm saying. No, I, I agree with you. Like something that says, "This is town park property," you know, no motorized vehicles permitted. I, I agree with that 100 percent. Okay. I think maybe we should have a motion, though, in, in this case, if that if that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Al, do you want to make the motion? Yeah, so I'll, I'll make a motion that we post signs out on the town properties that there's, you know, no 
no no trespassing or ATVs. And I'm not sure the correct wording here, but there's there's no trespassing or ATVs allowed on on town property. Well, the, 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 I, the exact words are. I think until we get something solid and done, uh, she's been pushing for signs for a long time, but it, it's obviously not going to get done. I think some small signs, like Al was saying, you post them. At least it gives people an idea that it's town property. The only thing is that I would say, I'll second the motion, but I, I don't think the word tre no trespassing should be on a town park land, uh, in my opinion. I think it should just be no motorized vehicles. Uh, I'm okay with that, though. That's I agree with you, Bill. Yep, that's fine. Uh, what my concern is that there's a lot of, I'll call it, um, in this particular area, off of Robinson, there's a lot of swamp land back there, and we know that um, the Jeep has been uh, stuck there. They had to have a bulldozer pull it out. So that's my concern because it's also a safety issue, too, if you think about it. If somebody gets hurt back there on town property and it's, you know, it's swamp land or whatever it happens to be, and, you know, we're, we're kind of responsible. And I don't want to see anybody get hurt either. That's the other point. I agree. Yep. I, I agree with that, too, but if, if we go back to the fact that people have dogs running free, supposed to have much control, then what if they bite somebody? Who's Jim, tell me, is the town liable for that? No, the town's not responsible in that case. It's the dog owner. Right. But again, the, the, the code, as the code is currently drafted, you do not have to have a dog on a leash, provided that the dog is within your control. If you can't control the dog and it runs away, but again... Even if you had a dog on a leash and it bit somebody, that, that's a separate violation of the code. So No, I understand that. I'm a dog owner. I get yeah. it. But my problem is I've also seen when people have dogs supposedly under control and they're spooked and they go after somebody. Sure. Then, then they're no longer under. Even the supervisor even said that they can be very annoying. So yeah, I, I mean, and, and so, so the, you know, the, the idea was that um, you know, in a park, or, or, and that was what I was suggesting, you know, you, you may pro, you know, require a dog to be on a leash in all town parks, you know, and you may be able to, you may make exceptions, but again, that's, I, the code doesn't, good idea. the code doesn't, speaking. right now we don't have that in our code. So if, if you wanted to put that in your code, you'd have to amend the code to do that. You know, I think right now we have a motion and second, and I want to come back to the amendment of the code, but we have motion and second to at least within those several areas that the code does allow us to take some action to make up some signs that will be posted at these you know, locations. There's a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion on that? And we'll authorize uh, Steve to go purchase you know, signs you know, for that purpose. Okay, all in favor? Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Jim, would you be able to put together a proposed, you know, code amendments on some of these other issues that would allow us to get the right sign or signs up for certain properties? This is consistent with also our plan on upgrading this map. Yeah. Uh, we want to be in line, and then uh, the sooner the better as far as a board meeting, but certainly no later than getting it before the board in the May meeting. So uh, to, to that point, uh, you know, I, I think that, again, because of the process of updating the code, um, the, the one issue that we really don't have a hand, so the first question is with respect to dogs, um, would there be, I mean, would you just have a blanket prohibition that says in a park a dog has to be on a leash, or is there any consensus for the board that some one park could be out of that or I mean in, in you know smaller parks where there's playgrounds I don't think it's appropriate to have a dog off a leash mm -hmm. but in some of the larger parks it may be appropriate I you know right. it's the flavor of the board I can draft I'm, it I'm going to be very honest with you even the county park Goldwyn Park your dog needs to be at all times I don't okay. think we park larger than that big harmless but I think a wise and prudent thing for the town to incorporate. I mean, we could put that in and, you know, let the public weigh in on it and, you know, the board. And, and I, I don't think I have a good argument. Um, let me, I was just thinking about this. So I was at Carnwath, right, 
over the weekend and there was a gentleman with his dog that was running around and he had it under control but what if i decided to take my dog out on a leash and that dog came after my dog so i don't think i have a good argument so i think what we should we should have uh, a leash requirement in any town park now does that mean maybe at Carnwath i could have a longer leash you know what right. i mean right right I agree. No, certainly i mean so so we would put in a leash requirement the only other issue there's, there's, um, you know, an issue regarding hunting. Right now, we don't have a blanket prohibition on hunting. I'm going to put that in as yes. a suggestion. Because um, I, I mentioned to you, Jim, I've gotten two inquiries with respect to the land behind Town Hall, whether or not they could go deer hunting there. Again, that's not, that's actually, I do not believe, a uh, park. So that's a different issue. So is uh, it we could probably accomplish that. Right. There, there's, there's. I believe there's a provision in our town code that you can't shoot at, but you can't shoot on property where there's a sewer treatment plant. Um, so we have some some strange kind of provisions that float around in the code. Well, um, in the past, in the past, there have been bow hunters allowed to hunt behind town hall. I know that bow hunting only. I'm just asking because I've had been approached twice on that bill. Yeah, right. so we need to, we do need to take a position because it's kind of been one of those things where. You know, depending on who you ask, you are allowed. So I agree we need to take a position on that. Now, I'll also, again, and we can put that in the same local law. It's it's not going to be, I mean, I, I would, again, suggest that um, for purposes of um, the parks, you know, any hunting or any discharge of a weapon, you know, a bow or a firearm uh, would be prohibited. Um, and then, you know, there, there are a number of properties that the town owns um, that um, are either, you know, um, utility sites, water and sewer plants, you know, things of that nature. And then the land, you know, we, we have, you know, some sites that are kind of designated open space, the land around Fieldstone, right. um, you know, so, um, and there's provisions in the environmental conservation law uh, I circulated in the email, you know, regarding 500 feet from a dwelling and things of that nature. But um, so, you know, they apply. But I, I one of the other things is I'm, I'm going to reach out to uh, Nimer, uh, the town's insurance carrier, to see if they have any any recommendations. I think from a from a liability point of view, I think you'd certainly want to pro prohibit hunting on town property. Um, you know, whether you permit it, you know, in a certain case at a, a I don't see a good reason why you would do it, 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 except for, you know, a situation where you want to control a deer population or something like that. But that would probably go through the state and, you know, where they would be probably giving you a special exemption or, you know, well, that, no, would, we, that would not again, be our decision, right? That would be uh, Again, because because it's because of um, the municipal home rule law, we have the ability to control um, our lands and how they're used. Okay. So. Um, there's some older attorney general opinions that predate the municipal home rule law um, that say that a town cannot pro prohibit hunting on their property. But, you know, that predates the municipal home rule law. And, you know, it's my opinion that the municipal home rule law, you know, would trump that, trump that decision to give the town the ability to regulate how the public you know, goes onto its property. So. Okay. And then second, you know, there are, you know, whether or not it requires town code change, but Jessica had, you know, prepared before some other, you know, rules uh, for the parks to make it uniform for those parks that, such as Amarts or Robinson, do those require code change or is that something the board can act on as far as saying here are what you can and cannot do, not necessarily, you know, finable, you know, that type of thing, but reminders for safety. Um, I'm trying to... Uh I mean, and we can, you know, again, there could be certain level of discretion regarding what I would do um, is put a provision in the local law that it would, would authorize the town board to by resolution to adopt, you know, additional um, measures regarding, you know, granting licenses to, to use, you know, the gazebo or, you know, right. park facilities. Um, and then also maybe, you know, adopting playground regulations or something like that. So um, 
I can reach out to the to the insurance carrier to see, you know, if there's any if anybody's got any kind of good practices on that. But from a liability point of view, um, you know, you want to have um, a schedule of regular inspections of the park, you know, things of that sort. So in the event that someone gets in bit, someone gets injured in the park, you know, you've got a uh, um, a record of of the park being maintained. So you know, I, without uh, going through the minutia of all the things in the code, can we get something fairly quickly that will at least provide this basic outline, basic enablement, Jim? Yeah, that I, I, gets I, to the board? certainly. I, I think the one thing that you know, I, I, we'll draft this. We you know, we, we have we started working on it. We have to have that in there, um, and we can draft the local law. The one thing that um, we haven't really looked at, I know it's been kicking around, is. Um, and I don't know what the past practice was out at Robinson Lane um, as far as, um, you know, was there a, a shutdown time at night or was it just after the last game? So, but, you know, I think Jessica had addressed that in her proposed, you know, signs. And so we dust that off, but get that done, you know, ASAP. Um, and back, back to the motion resolution we just passed, if you would, you know, first draft that, right, you know, to fit, and then let me take a look at any board member just to make sure it captures the sense of what we just did oh, like, yeah. before we get that finalized. So yeah, that's, that's, right. that's a good idea. Okay. So, uh, you know, Jim, it would be great, I think, that uh, if we could have something, uh, at least uh, an outline or a framework, if nothing more, for our May 10th meeting, at least as a discussion, you know, with the board. Yeah, no, we can have, what we'll do is we'll draft a local law and an introductory resolution and then, you know, um, okay. we'll see if, you know, there's any public comments. Angela? But based on the discussions that we have, you know, uh, we'll, okay. we'll add that, you know, the dog, the dogs must be on a leash and, um, and you know, uh, dawn to dusk and, you know, with the exception of, you know, uh, lighted fields, um, no hunting, so. Angela, do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, maybe, maybe, Jimmy, you could send that to us before the May 10th, the May yes, May certainly. meeting, or, and we can add our thoughts to it, too, maybe to help move it along. Right, right. And Bill, you. Bill, you've seen a lot of issues over the years, you know, you're a good uh, warehouse for knowledge, uh, so, and I, you know, you know, you can uh, also jump in on that once we get something from Jim. Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh -oh, hold on. I got uh, two things going at once here. Hang on. Uh, what I would say is that these things go back to the uh, our commission. Right. The commission. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is antiquated, uh, but I'll be happy to comment on it as we move forward. Okay. Thank you, Bill. The, you. the other thing that is currently in the code um is that um no alcohol is permitted in the park so in any parks um, right i think not smoking either right no what's that no smoking, yeah, no no smoking and no but again they don't they're in actually different chapters they don't appear in the in the uh, in the park chapter so and then the final thing related to all that is what is the teeth that we're going to have right is do we increase fine it's just like you know we've heard a lot about littering, you know, and that the that fines haven't been increased or there's maybe no way to enforce it. I know there's challenges, but I think with respect to these rules, so when we need to make sure that the, you know, quote unquote, uh, punishment for violation is, you know, significant enough that people take note. I, I believe right now it's probably $250 fine. So. I think that's a valid point, Dick. Thank you. I think that that yeah. needs to be maybe increased. Yeah, and, and things that are related to public health and safety. It's just like you know the throwing, the indiscriminate, you're careless or intentional. I don't know. You know, throwing a PPE on the ground. I mean that, right. that because that should be to me that should be more than just the normal littering charge, right? You know, that's you know, but I agree. You know, and that we should discuss as well is what are the teeth that we're going to have to this now you're laughing <laughs> or smiling right. you have a comment no not good okay no. anyway you know but, but let's look at it let's get something you know where that we you know uh, 
a straw man that we can then uh, you can know, work with pieces of the straw and add others back in. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jim. You know, let's Thanks, Jim. Let's, let's do that. Uh, another you know favorite topic trying to get these is uh, special street signs, particularly to you know Angela's concerns with respect to her ward, but. Uh, we have a you know, combination of speed and then things dealing with special needs, I think, are the categories that where we needed to address and make sure that the process is you know, properly uh, understood going, going forward. So uh, we have the two aspects of it. Just, uh, Angela, I'm sorry, why don't you just first talk about speed limits, since I know it's a... Speed limits, I believe, in the town, um, people aren't adhering to them. I, nobody is doing the speed limits, especially in my ward. I think the sheriff's office has done a fantastic job. They're out there, they're looking, right. but I'm, I'm just afraid of fatalities going up. The kids aren't going to school right now, but I had an instance right on Chelsea Road where somebody went right by a school bus with a sign out going over 50 miles an hour. I'm sorry. Am I you or, or we... I'm sorry? Hello? Can hear it good. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we can hear it. Yeah, yeah. We can hear it. Sorry, but I think speed is a major problem. I, I, I really do. It must be my internet. Okay. I'm, are you okay? As the town grows and becomes more populated, I think my connection must be on. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I got you, Angela. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I just, we can I just all hear you. Something that we need to focus on, especially with construction that's going on, new buildings going up, or, or areas being refurbished and fixed. Uh, speed is a problem in this town. It, it, it really is. I have constituents very concerned and coming to me with, with problems with it. And I think it's something we all need to address, especially with little ones or the elderly. We have people crossing roads to get their mail. I mean, I'll be honest with you, some of them take their lives in their hands just trying to cross the road to get to their mailbox. I don't think we should go for fatality. Like, I believe in the town of Fishco and back to town road, that, that speed limit went down to 30 miles an hour from 50 after people have been killed. And I don't think, I don't think we want that. So I think it's something we need to focus on. I, you know, again, I think it's it's really related to one is making sure we get the consistency of signs because we, as we've discussed, there has been changes made to signs and we can't figure out where they are. And then we have this issue with the state approving signs, you know, just even on the stretch of Wheeler Hill Road, which also has the speeding and young kids, especially now going to the parks. You know, the only thing that I found, you know, effective is in fact, Back to the comment, the sheriff's doing, deputies doing a great job. They have been responsive. They have been putting, you know, vehicles out there, uh, mm -hmm. but they can't designate the full force, you know, to to that, you know, to you know, stop stationary vehicles. Uh, we can, you know, discuss in the future perhaps increasing stationary patrols, adding, you know, perhaps some more. Uh, budget at some point in time in doing that, uh, you know, because it has been effective as you've seen the records that, you know, uh, uh, Sergeant Stewart has provided, you know, have uh, seen a significant increase in tickets, fines, and even arrests. Uh, but, you know, we can't, under the current structure with two town patrols, we have a, a challenge of addressing, you know, a, a big town, you know, in that sense, uh, as far as various four wards that have a variety of similar problems but many different ones uh, but I do want to say again that the uh, sheriff's deputies have really responded you know whenever any of us have made requests uh, for uh, additional patrols I agree they do a fantastic job but again I, I don't want us to wait till there's fatalities to make a change right. so I think it's something we need to look at here you go Jim go ahead Jim Discuss it. So, um, with respect to the town of Wappinger, we have a town, New York State has established a town-wide speed limit of 30 miles an hour, um, with the exception of certain roads. And I shared the screen with the list of the roads and the speed limits. Um, most of the roads that have an increased speed limit are county roads. Um, 
but um, it's Osborne Hill Road has a 35 mile an hour. Myers Corners has 40. Widmer has 40. 35 on Middle Bush Road. 35 on Ketchum Town Road. 40 on Angel, All Angels. 45 on Chelsea Road. 40 miles an hour on North River Road, um, north of the Chelsea Hamlet. 35 on Old State Road. 40 on New Hackensack. 40 on Maloney Road. 40 on Smith Crossing Road, 40 on Didell, 40 on St. Nicholas Road, 35 on Old Hopewell, between 9D and the Wappinger, um, Poughkeepsie Line, and then 40 um, between um, the Wappinger, be uh, between Route 9D and um, East Fishkill, and then 40 on Old Route 9, um, 35 on Robinson Lane, 35 on DeGorma Hill Road, 35 on Montford, 35 on Myers Corners, and 35 on Baxter Town Road. Right, and the 35 miles an hour on Baxter Town Road was just changed because of fatality. Right, right. so. So I'm oh, going yeah. to be pursuing changing the speed limit in an area in my ward because so. I have two constituents coming to me, yeah. and I think you're aware of that. And, and I think, you know, if you take, you know, several of these roads, if you, if you take, say, you know, Angela, with respect to Chelsea Road or North River Road, if you're going 45, allow 45 in one section, then you suddenly hit, you know, 30 or 35. Nobody really slows down. It seems to me we should have consistency. You take, you know, another example on Middlebush. You know, you have that bend before the bend. It says 35, but then you have Town Hall, you have the you know, junior high, right? It's too fast, you know, for that, you know, area. So uh, is there, you know, back to Angela's point with which I have full agreement, is there a process that we can put in our recommendations and get, uh, whether it's the state senator or assemblyman or others to, you know, to, to amend this whole list to make it more uh, realistic in light of some of the, uh, you know, Angela said the children that are there, you know, other children, you know, special needs back to the special signs to to modify this. I'm not sure when the last time that when this was done, but it seems out of sync with what the town needs. Well, so uh, some of these roads um, have been the speed limits were set. They were probably reduced from 55. Um, I believe that um, the townwide speed limit wasn't reduced until sometime in the 90s, I believe, from doing the research. But so, um, you know, but again, these are the only ones that have a higher speed limit than 30. Um, and you can't, New York State will not, re except if it, unless it's a school zone, New, New York State will not reduce the speed limit between 30 miles, below 30 miles an hour. If so. we can just get to 30 miles an yeah, hour, that's a good thing. point, yeah. Jen, and also three. 45 miles an hour in yeah. a very densely populated area like Chelsea Road, which is not well, it's a not, it's road. Again, it's, it's a it's not, road. In, in the Hamlet, it's not 45. No, I just said 45 miles an hour on Chelsea Road from 9D to the Hamlet, where it's densely populated, is is unacceptable. Yeah, and again, I'm that's... Sorry. I mean, that, and the issue, though, is that that's under the county jurisdiction, so you got to get the county. I understand that. I understand I that. County would also agree that things need to change. Right. So and we will pursue that, right. and we will pursue River Road. And and I'm sorry, I have I, I represent constituents that are very concerned about this. Not to be they sorry about Angela, it's a legitimate point. Also, do Thank we have you. Asborn Hill Road? Osborne. It yes. says Asborn. Well, it's a typo. <laughs> it's a typo. <laughs> Osborne here for I don't know. Is it twice on here? I see something that says Asborn, number I, between Asborn Hill Road and Route 9. Oh, yeah. It's supposed to be Osborn. It also, it also refers to Jackson Avenue, right? which is right. wrong. Uh, question, Chelsea Road. Jim, what's the yeah, status yeah. of the speed limit situation on Chelsea Road? I've had residents actually call me and challenge the fact that the speed limit is not accurately displayed. Well, right now, there's the construction speed limit of 30 miles an hour on Chelsea Road. Okay, um, that, that construction zone is not uh, in the area where the sign has been changed. Right. 
So what are we doing to correct that? Chelsea Road is not our jurisdiction. So that's a county. What do you mean? What do you mean Chelsea Road's not our jurisdiction? Yeah. Chelsea Road's a county. Road. Uh, all right, correction, correction. River Road North. River Road North, yeah, right. So that went back to 40. Um, I believe the, the signs were put back up um, to put it at 40 because that's what the state has it at from three-tenths of a mile north of Bank Street out to um, the intersection with Old State Road. And then Old State Road is 35. So that begs the question, do we know that the speed limit signs right. on town roads are consistent with the statutory uh, definitions within our code? We probably need to look at that. I, I would say so. So, uh, Could you send I, this list out to us? Mike, are you on the sure. phone? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I'm here. So, um, yeah, I can. I mean, I mean one of the things that, that you, you could do, correct? Along with the help of our. Dick, you're broken up. I can't understand you. Yeah, you faded in and out there. Yeah, yes, it broke up. I'm back now. Yes. So on this list, the town roads are Widmer Road, um, North River Road, Old State Road, Maloney Road, Smith Crossing. Um, Didel is a town road, right? Yes. Yes. St. Nicholas. Yes. Um, and then Old Route 9. Um, Robinson Lane, DeGormo, Mon and Monfort. So, um, you know, there's only a handful here that are town roads. Mm -hmm. And everywhere else in the town, um, the speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Mike, I don't think you, I think Dick was trying to get at that um, if you could help make sure some of the speed signs are consistent with the law. Right. Yeah, what you were asking, Dick? Yep. I, I, yeah, I couldn't hear it, Dick. He, uh, yes. I couldn't hear what he was saying. Yep, yep. But yes, I've been, I've been talking to Jim Haran on it, and so we're, you know, I'm, I'm following Jim's lead here. He told me to put the 40 mile an hour back up, and we did. Yep. And I understand so. that, yeah, and I have constituents that don't understand how it went to 30 to 40. I get the same thing, it, Angela, that it's too slow. So, I mean... I, I finish you got a battle, I got a battle. <laughs> Can I finish my thought, please? I have constituents that are very upset with that. Sure. Pursue that and find out how it can change. So thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. But, again, they're concerned with safety, which is utmost. It goes from 35 to 40, back to 30. And they have an issue with that. And I need to, I, I, I need to take care of that for them. So thank you. Uh, Angela, I agree with Jeff too, but Perfect. I got people thank that you. are calling me. They got tickets. They were issued tickets when the signs were t uh, changed without nobody knowing it illegally, from what I understand. And people got tickets going to work that at work at the okay. water plant down there. I um, understand. So well, I'm going to go back to the fact when I was on the planning board and there was a study done regarding the speed on that is on that area. And I'm waiting for the reports on that, and I will share it with the board. So I appreciate everybody's support, and I understand that everybody agrees that safety is very important to all of us. And I will get back with everybody. Thank you. Well, but so I think we need to, to go um, through this. We need to go through this list and get our opinions, and then you know I had talked with Senator Serino a number of months ago, and she is willing to help, and I think Karen Lawler would be willing. To help but we need to get a plan of attack of how we go address this as you know we tried with middle bush road you know to get this you know the speed lowered um of course we tried to get it below 30 you know maybe we go back and say 35 to 30 and get late, less resistance from the state but we got a lot of resistance bob Walkine has been very supportive actually in the past so we need to develop a strategy and may an action plan for the overall list i think going forward because so you know, every ward has an issue. So with respect to the speed limits, um, the, you know, there was a request that were done previously, but, you know, based on 
the town-wide speed limit, since there is a town-wide speed limit, um, the, you know, the default, the default speed should be considered to be 30. And the question then would be, you know, why would you have something higher than that? Right. Um, at the time, many of these roads were put on here. Um, they were, um, reductions from 55 to whatever the, the speed limit is the um let's see um i yeah the the town wide speed limit wasn't enacted until um it looks like 1999 so um so some of these roads that are on here um were um the you know the limits were predated the reduction in town wide 30 miles an hour so the only thing is that um there is a process to go to the new york state dot to have a reduction but we would have to prepare a speed uh you know there's a there's an engineering study that needs okay. to be done. That's, well that's what they always call for you know jim and those right. cost money and each road requires one so correct you know, I, to senator serena i said this is ridiculous you know it's a lot of good taxpayer money we know is there a way to help? She's willing to, to help. Is that well, you know, the, in, the, in the past, the, the way it worked was up until, I believe, two or three years ago, um, we would put in the request and the state would do the study hmm. um, at their cost. You're but right, they right. they they <laughs> put that cost back on us and said, right. you know, you fund the study. So in the past, all we had to do is put in a request right. and the state would pay for the study. So, um Good luck. Well, let's figure a legal angle, or not so legal maybe, but a legal angle that says that, hey, the town-wide speed limit is 30, unless there's a specific justification for something different, then we want to try to get it uniform. Uh, I agree with you, you know, David. As, as, a, as a concept, right? We, we have a lot more to discuss. How do we do that? How can we, you know, can we default all of our roads back to 30 and start over? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, again, that was, um, you know, they, they did that, but again, I don't, I, I think they kind of just created the list when they did the town wide to say, okay, well, these ones were already off. So, and by the way, for safety purposes, I don't want to get phone calls from when all the neighbors get pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, the other thing too is, you know, when you set a 30 mile an hour speed limit, nobody's going to do it anyway. So. You know, one of the things that they look at in doing the studies is what's the, um, they look at the 85 percentile speed. Um, so right. one, of the, one of the things is that the speed limit is based on what the current traffic speed is. Um, it's, you know, from an engineer traffic engineering point of view, if, you know, the 85 percent, if 80 percentile is 40 miles, 45 miles an hour, they probably won't reduce the speed limit. Well, you know, Jim, I... Jim, to that point, and for everybody, I, I, you know, most of you are probably not aware, but Dutchess County has an outstanding database, and the Dutchess County Transportation Council and that whole organization has done, to me, a very impressive job. It's on the website, right, Bill? You know, showing the volumes of traffic for most town roads, and in fact, if there wasn't a road this past year, I think after consulting with several of you, we. I got four or five additional roads on there to be surveyed, right, to see what is the volume of traffic. So, for example, Myers Corner or New Hackensack, you know, as that volume of traffic's increased, they are willing to make recommendations, which say, okay, instead of 40 or 45, maybe you lower it. But it's an excellent resource. You can go online. I, I can send you the, you know, yeah. the, 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 the site. I've forgotten it off the top of my head. But, right, Bill, I mean, we, the county's put a lot of money into it these studies you know that probably could be helpful to this. i think it's called the uh poughkeepsie dutchess county Tra uh, transportation, transportation advisory council. council they do a lot of great work right and you know, uh, I, you know the, the one that i i sit on as board member you know is uh in voting is dutchess county transportation council that's, that's right that's what it is and it, it's it's key that we have someone on that yeah. because when they decide to uh do improvements to route 9 and 9d we need to have somebody on that uh, at those meetings. And I've been attending every single meeting and I'll get the word. And actually, we've gotten a lot of changes and they are very receptive to us, including 
even discussion on, you, know, you heard Marcus shout out about <laughs> me and you know, Old Hopewell Road. I mean, but they're aware of our position and doing more studies. But I think, Angela, that's something that, you know, I'll, I'll send this, the, the site, you know, the address to you, and we can look at volumes of flow, right, and how it's increased over the years. So I think that would be great. I really appreciate it. I look forward to working with you on that. I, I, I really do. Um, I, I think it's something that we can improve because this area has grown so much since the 90s. Well, I think, I think you know, agree. one of the you know, board members for your wards, and we'll work you know together on that. But I think and we need to get a strategy that how we tackle this piece, right? And at least, you know, so we're doing something in the squeaky wheel syndrome, right? You know, and we're, we've become a little bit more of a squeaky wheel in the last few years and it's, it's work. I mean, politely done everything and uh, we've gotten a good response, you know, uh, including the DPW commissioner. He's, he's been quite responsive you know, uh, overall. So, you know, yeah, I, I, I commend Mr. Balka and I commend everybody in the county. I can, they've done a great job and they're always there to help us. So hopefully together as a team, we'll get this fixed. And I so appreciate it. Oh. Also, one Let's last thing, Dick, uh, uh, not Kim, you know, we, sign issue. I'm sorry. Um, the autism um, signs have been okay. But yes, I, the, 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 the next thing. Very slow on updating the manual. I spoke with Ed Goff from Region 8 DOT, and he'll get the ruling down to us as soon as possible. Things are slow with regulations and manuals and updates right now. So. So with respect to that, you know, and this is just a question out of ignorance, but I, as I recall in the past, there used to be some, um, uh, what is it, the, uh, lack of receptivity, you know, hesitancy to identify you know, people that have some special needs, right? You know, ostracize them or something. Uh, I don't know, Jim, is there anything that we have to be careful of th these days with respect to that? Well, the only thing is that there's two, two issues. One is um, uh, uh, DOT recommends that no sign be put out, put up without the consent of the person, the parents of the person um, who um, the sign would refer to. And then also in this specific instance, Jim, the parents are asking for it. Right. And then the other issue is um, you need to keep track as to whether or not the kid, the child um, or children still reside there. Yeah, they, so they, you want to, you know, express that to us. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things is that if the person moves away, you want to take the side down. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, then we could be looking at, cause I, you know, I, I think probably everybody, each one of the boards in town, we have some issues like that. You know, I, there's several people after Chris, you raised it, you know, said, Oh, we thought we weren't allowed to do that. So, you know, we can, revisit that throughout the war, right? Yeah. I, I mean, the, okay. the one thing, okay. well, then, the one you know, thing as that we get that, then I you can coordinate that with uh, uh, Mike. Is that something where we go and order some special signs? Yeah, that's what we have done in the past. Well, we have to wait. Uh, New York State yeah. DOT is, is adding that sign to the MUTCD. So yeah. that when it gets added to the MUTCD, they're going to have some specifications as to what the color of the sign is. It's going to be black on yellow, but um, as far as the sign, okay. it's any somewhat idea when, Any idea when they're going to have that, Jim? Is that going to be, you know, another one of those six-month year projects or what? No, so okay. I they committed Ed Goff from Section 8, from the Region 8 in Poughkeepsie, and he's going to get it down to us because he said he'll, it's probably going to be the end of the year by the time they update the manual with all that's going on. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Chris. Yeah, so I asked him specifically. I said, could you please just give me the ruling? Um, I, I, you know, I, uh, the, I, um, the problem is that, you know, you're going to want to be consistent with whatever language they approve. Sure. Um, and there has been one, it's been um, one says autistic, uh, you know, child with autism, one says autistic child. So there's different, you know, mm -hmm. And technically, if you put the wrong sign up, you'd have to take it down and put it up right. once the regulation right. comes down. So, so somehow we put up these signs in the past and didn't really worry about all this. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, you know, they, it's come up. I mean, the other thing is, and I, I also right. think you want to get a waiver from the parent um, that the sign goes up because there's some studies 
um, with respect to the child that play signs that say that they actually create more of a hazard than they solve. Um, so someone did a traffic engineering study and said that it distracts, people are looking at the side, distracting them away from the road, and that there's more incidents of um, people being hit, where if, if they just uh, slow down. Um, yeah, well, the problem is they don't slow down, right? Right, so. <laughs> so we're trying to get something that will allow them to slow down, and then you know, for a violation, is there a fine associated with that, or does that go back to what we talked about before, looking at our... No, it's not in the VTL. So there's no violation in the VTL. Mm, okay. So the only last point I just want to make is that we have a number of these signs around the town. I think there's at least three autism signs and a number of, uh, I think there's a deaf child sign and a blind child sign. We need to make sure that uh, they're still uh, applicable to those existing right. areas. Those signs were put up like 15 years ago. Those yeah. people, if it was a child, they're now an adult. Yeah. Right. I think they're even still there. Yeah. I looked at the um, I looked at the the two autistic child signs that were previously two or three that were previously put in, and the residents, the people who applied for the signs, still own the property at least as of you know the last assessment moment. Okay. I, I think that, you know I, anyway. Let, let's let's uh, you know move ahead on this this overall sign, but look at some of these special signs you know and based on that doing some sort of inventory, as Bill said, perhaps as we go out, look at street signs and, you know, we can look at all of, all the signs out there, you know, to make sure that uh, they're complying with what we want, as Dave said. Okay, well, thank you. I, you know, longer discussion, but I think a useful discussion, appreciate it. And thank you, Angela, for again. You know, no, thank everybody. It's, it's yeah. important that we, we do this together. So thank you. Uh, speaking of uh, roads and streets, Mike, are you still on? Yes. Why don't you just give a high level, you know, you, you had shared some you know, thoughts with me about, you know, paving going forward, but tying into uh, the asphalt, uh, you know, uh, fees and so forth. But why don't you just give a high level what you're looking at uh, over the next uh, few weeks or months or so? Um, I, I called out the Tilcom sale of, of prices for the black top right now it's 62 dollars it's going to be lower than that because the oils are down because of what's going on um i, I guess i have four hundred thousand dollars in the account right now to pave uh i thought we'd refund some of it out so we can get all the roads done that's up to you, the town board on that um again i'm ready i can be ready to roll at the end of uh, may i can start paving at the end of you know, if everything falls into order. I don't have to mill all the roads. I went over the roads. And uh, all of them don't have to be, which I thought they did. So that's going to be cheaper. Yeah, we only, I think we only got to mill maybe three roads out of all them roads that we're going to be paved. Okay. Um, we're in a process now of re, uh, rebuilding the basins that are going to be paved. Uh, again, I'm just waiting on them two companies to get back to me with the prices. Of what what it's going to be. So Tilcon is open now, Mike. On mill. No, Tilcon won't be open till the fourth. But I've talked to the salesman uh, at Tilcon and also sale, and uh, they're both working on prices. And they said hopefully by the end of the week they will have prices for the material. And then I'm getting prices for uh, milling the roads that I'm going to mill. And I hopefully I should have everything. I hope by the end of the week. And like I said, uh, and I'm looking forward to paving at the end of May, if that's all possible. So you think that by our next board meeting on the 10th of May, you should have something then and a proposal to us to consider? Yeah, as soon as I get my information, I will. Okay. okay. Any other questions for Mike? I just think that's we need to take a look at, um, you know, the fiscal side of this. Uh, pretty closely before we commit to uh, a significant expenditure. Uh, discussing uh, earlier with Jim about chips, the chips money's a go. That's going to happen. That's two hundred twenty thousand right there. Yep. Uh, the money that we had earmarked for paving, I believe you said, was four hundred thousand uh, in the four hundred six thousand bill. 
for him. So that's cash money right there. But I don't want to deplete the B fund. Uh, and I'm sure you can agree with me because the B fund is funded by sales tax. And, uh, you know, looking at the numbers right now, and you heard the same thing I did, uh, Supervisor, uh, the county is anticipating a 40% uh, reduction in sales tax uh, revenue at this moment. So uh, I just think that we need to look at uh, the process this year and maybe even further prioritize right. uh, what we want to do. Great. So I understand exactly what you're saying. And again, if, when you guys come up with the monies, you know, that I can do, uh, just let me know and I'll, we'll start, I'll meet with Tom Harvey and we'll, we'll get a, you know, the roads that actually really, really need it. Uh, we can address them first. Um, again, I don't want to, you know, like I talked to you earlier, I don't want any of that to happen. You know, if we go really, you know, the, the spenders you know, on everything. So, I'm so, we, that one. so if we have $406,000 left over from 2019 paving, we've got, Roughly 220 in chip money coming in. Yeah, that's almost half of what we were looking to do for 2020, right? We're looking to do 1.3 million at roughly 5.6 yeah, miles. Yeah, it's going to be cheaper than that now too because we don't have to do the mill on, on all the roads and the. the you know, I mean, the, other, the, the, the black top is going to be cheaper. So the other thing we ought to consider is not only is the tar or the asphalt going to be cheaper, but think about the interest rates. Interest rates are going down. So typically we bond about right. two and a half percent. So you're probably going to be able to do something better than two and a half percent, and we're never that low. So it's just you know time to start thinking about. And I don't want to rush into like you, Bill, but I want to start thinking about is this an opportunity where, you know, you can bond for it, but you don't necessarily have to take the money. Correct? You can bond for it, and and when you actually use the money, you can do it. But if you can get it at a lower rate, why not yeah. take advantage of the lower rate? But I think you know, Al. I agree. I think back to Bill's point, and I think that Mike should work with Frederick, and I'll, I'll work with him too to look at the overall financial situation of the highway fund. You know, and look at these several different, you know, in some sense pluses. You know, I think Mike did save you know a fair amount of money because of the winter on salt. You know, we can see where we are as far as some of that actual money in there. You know, and Bill's right. You know, the the county executive said forty percent one positive thing for municipalities as compared to the county is there is a guaranteed $25 million pot that, you know, the county executive will be telling us soon uh, what our share of that is. So that's not a total shortfall, you know, perhaps. Uh, but I think we need to look at the highway fund where we are with, against what we had budgeted, what we had appropriated, and what cash is on there. I agree very much with Bill, but I think we do have some you know, flexibility at this time, thank goodness, because of some positive things that have developed, you know, with pricing and, you know, and as, you know, funds from last year without going into perhaps the full extent of any bonding, if at all. You know, we can see where chips mm -hmm. in and the surplus is. I, I just think that by having this conversation right now, it's, you know, we're showing due diligence moving forward because, let's face it, we can't see the, I mean, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. Um, I don't know where this is going. I don't think anybody does. No. Uh, I'd like to think we're going to start seeing things open back up, but that doesn't mean we're going to have sales tax revenue flowing in either. So uh, without getting in the weeds on this, I think we're doing the right thing. We're taking this one step at a time. And to Al's point, uh, which I hadn't thought of, uh, interest rates versus debt service with lower interest rates, there's, there's something to be said about that. Uh, so I appreciate the discussion. Thank you. Aren't, aren't, aren't the bonds typically two years as well? When we do well, what we've done in the past is that yeah. I think you know we've looked at a two-year you know projection and done something along those lines. So, so, so you do two years to out, Al's like, point, if if you project two years out from now at today's rates, I mean that's something to look at. I think yeah. you're going to save some money there, Chris, and and that's what I'm looking at. So again, you don't have to use all the money now. But you have the ability that you've secured the funds. If you do, and if you get it at say one and a half or one point seven five versus two point five percent, you save on the amount of money that you're going to pay out. You know, in a, not only a monthly but an annual basis from uh, you know what you got to pay the bond back over twenty years. So that, that's what I'm looking at too. So I, I I think one of the things though we have to look at, um, and again with respect to bonding. So two points. One with respect to the chips money. The chips money. Um, is comes from New York State, but it ultimately starts from the federal government. 
So um, as far as the chips money itself, the 220 of the chips money um, situation at the state may not necessarily affect that money. Um, in the past several years, there's been Pave New York money and EWR money that's coming from come from the state. That is in um, the current fiscal year budget at the state level, but anything in the New York State currently in the New York State budget is tentative. Um, the right. governor exactly. has said that he's going to reevaluate right. um, the state's finances, so um, that money may not be available. Um, I, I'm again comp pretty confident that the chips money will be there, but the other two funds may not be, and they total approximately fifty grand, fifty to sixty grand. Um, the, with respect to bonding right now, um, we can move forward with the bond resolution. I spoke to Doug Goodfriend, um, regarding, um, how some of the governor's orders would affect the bonding. Um, one thing is that, um, you know, any bond we adopt is subject to permissive referendum, um, because of the situation right now. It's difficult, but not impossible, to some for someone to circulate a petition for a permissive referendum. So, bond council has said that they believe that that is that you can satisfy that condition. There's a second provision regarding what's called an estoppel notice. After the permissive bond resolution resolution period is passed, um, the town under local finance law can adopt a uh, can publish what's called an estoppel notice. Which, we, which is a 30-day period where anybody who wants to challenge the finance, the issuance of the bond, would have to commence a lawsuit. And if they do not commence a lawsuit within that time frame, they are barred from doing so in the future. So that's something that um, uh, bond uh, buyers would want to say. But that's uh, nothing new. We've been doing that for the six years I've been. Well, the problem is that right now, because of the moratorium in the courts, um, you can't issue an estoppel notice because no one can bring a lawsuit to challenge the issuance of the bond. Oh, I got you. So that's your point, though. So that's the point. Uh, is that um, until such time as that moratorium would would be lifted, we couldn't do the estoppel notice. Um, the other thing too is do the estoppel notice. Just no one can challenge the estoppel. Right. I mean, in essence, what you what right. you wouldn't publish the estoppel notice until until the governor lifted the stay. Right. Um, and so, at, and again, we're talking about you know doing original work. Um, you know, the spending you know the chips money first. So um, we may not have to go to to bond to do the final borrowing on the bond. So the town board could go through the process, adopt a bond resolution. Um, go through the permissive referendum period, probably by that time, I think the governor would have lifted the ban on the courts because the, the courts are in the process of opening up. They probably will open up at least, I would think, by the end of May at least. Um, so, um, but the other issue is, and this is one of the concerns regarding the interest rate, municipalities in New York may, not, may be paying a higher interest rate than other municipalities or other governmental entities because of the precarious nature of New York state finances. So that's one thing. We may not be in the same situation as, as some other municipalities as far as um, financing. But so I think it would be appropriate, you know, should look at how other municipalities in New York, um, what rates they're seeing, because, you know, we're not the federal government. So what the federal government is paying on their T-bills um, you know, the issue is, in essence, how how good is the credit of this municipality? And I think, you know, municipalities in New York may be paying a premium going forward. We're in a very good situation, but I haven't, I haven't seen anything from Moody's lately, so I don't know how. No, I haven't either. We that. haven't gotten anything recently. But you could ask Doug, right? Or right. And, right. And I don't, you know, oh. so, and, and again, you know, the, the financial advisors track that. So right. that's one of the things that. You know they'll they'll have a handle on, but I think you know oh. municipal debt in New York may be paying a slightly higher premium. Each than municipal I'll I'll stick with yeah. Each municipality is different based on their financial situation. Right, right. As far as it's phenomenal. But what I'll do 
to board members is I will talk with Frederick. We'll talk with our financial advisor. You know, we do have one you know, for the town in addition to the Moody's and all that. So we can get on the phone with them and follow up with respect to what Jim is asking. Al, you know, I'll let you know, you know, if you're available, you could join in on that too. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. But we'll try to get something on there because they've been very good, I think, uh, over a period of time working with the town. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. A anything else on that topic? Mike, do you have anything else you'd like to raise? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. We have one other thing we'll come to in a minute. Okay. Well, let, let's, let's move on. Uh, the next two items, uh, you know, I want to just briefly talk about, and uh, I've sent you one, you know, as, as Bill will tell you, you know, we've had uh, in existence since 84, something called as the uh, Conservation Advisory Council or Commission, depending on how it's termed, and it's chapter nine in our code. And as I looked at it, and I've talked with Bill before, there are, are, were a number of issues uh, with respect to that, and also it was archaic, and it wasn't really addressing much, and therefore we in recent time, I don't know when the last time was billed, but uh, nothing's been done you know, with it for a while. But as I look at what we're facing with respect to the town and issues regarding safety and health, and then including the environment, somewhat relating to the old CAC, but you know, different, I took a stab at amending it. Have uh, some, you know, again, it's a rough draft. You know, I resent to you the red line your version to look at and to get some thoughts. I've also addressed, I think, some of the concerns that uh, Bill had had, you know, previously trying to uh, deal with this so it's a more functioning but not usurpatory uh, process uh, that takes away something from the town board or even the planning board. But I think as I've looked at issues that we'll also encounter relating to opening the town or how we deal with some of these issues uh, which some of which will be customized you know i thought that it may be a helpful tool since we have a vehicle which is this existing town code that's there uh and to make it more useful functional uh, and as an advisory group you know to the board you know, so that that was the idea you know behind it you know you have a draft i don't intend to do anything more today you know with it other than introduce that now, similarly, you know, as I've looked at what can we do to get, uh, uh, as we look at the number of these issues, even we've talked about today and concerns, while we've addressed, uh, I think, a lot of things uh, quite well with respect to the website. And again, thanks to Tom Barr and Joey uh, and the county. You know, the county, uh, as far as one of our uh, services we've gotten, you know, from them and shared services, they, they did a great great job rich barnes and uh, who's the other one joey um, uh, matt mcnamara yeah uh we're we're you know, great in, in their help but looking at where there are still perhaps some gaps you now as i looked at what other communities and basically you know seeing what uh, even new york city's done so communities have done this 311 approach and so I've been working with Tom and also Joey on a concept, I'm not ready to share the rough draft, but basically it would be taking uh, several you know, features that help in one spot in maneuvering through a website, looking at, you know, for example, I have here you know, a front page, you know, parking rules for regular season and winter, you know, recycle yard, park hours road work scheduling, you know, the, the scheduling for cleaning. So you bring it into one information group, but all, also very important, as I've done some research into it, it would have a feature that are called, you know, complaints, uh, looking at, you know, quality of life, a number of the issues that we've had, you know, you know, we don't, you know, we, we sometimes, and, you know, things drop to the cracks, and uh, this would be a means, not totally replacing some of the others, but for our residents to get stuff in here. So for example, I have, and I will, will share this for a future discussion, but like quality of life, health and safety complaints, noise, unleashed dogs, wild dogs, you know, other complaints, uh, illegal dumping, ATV, dirt bike reports. So it would have this mechanism that would able to get them in potholes that would, could help with my field, legal parking, uh, abandoned property so that it's a means to bring it in. I've 
I've seen a lot of other communities have done it. You know, it's something that may be worth us considering. Uh, I just wanted to raise that, but I'll be, you know, sharing with you some of the uh, thinking that goes into it for discussion or whether it's to, uh, it, you know, we, we adopt it or not, you know, but certainly I think it may be a useful function. So, you know, I just wanted to introduce that to you as a concept. The only, the only reservation I would, I would have uh, is calling it 311. Uh, the 311 part of it originates from municipalities that have a 311 phone number. We do not have a 311 right. phone number in Dutchess County. So, you know, how we fine tune this, you know, uh, I, Bill, you know, I, I agree with you. You know, it's just right now the concept page. I, I, I like the concept. To be honest with you, I do like the concept, kind of like a one stop shop for town right. services, like a portal type of thing. Uh, certainly would support that. Um, I know you guys are good with branding, so I'll look forward to hearing what you come up with. Okay. So, anyway, I just wanted to advise the board, let you know, and but also I'm trying to deal with a number of these ongoing points so we. You know, get uh, more focused, right, and then get it out there. So, and then That's you can break reports. I like it too. Okay, okay. So uh, that that's all that I had, you know, for discussion. Uh, the next, and thank you. I think we've had some really good discussion, excellent discussion. The um, uh, going through our resolutions, I mentioned there's some of the table. We'll come back to uh, the appointments. Of the first one uh, action is that we have, I think Steve, yeah, Steve's still here and uh, Tim's here, but there was a resolution 202100. This is a resolution awarding the contract for HVAC maintenance. Uh, and uh, this is uh, where, you know, Steve had had an original uh, appropriation in the budget, you know, again, appropriation, not authorization of 20,000 and you know, Steve had done more research. I think CPL had looked at it, answering some of the questions that we had before on the HVAC system pertaining to the town hall and the emergency services, the ESB, emergency services building. And this was a uh, proposal would be increasing the 20,000 to 25,115. Before I have a motion, maybe, you know, Steve, why don't you introduce what you looked into a discussion and Tim, you could uh, take it from an engineering point of view because we had some discussion about other liability, what have you, on long term. So, uh, Steve, why don't you give a summary? As I mentioned, this new system is very sophisticated. Um, it's a heat pump rather than the uh, you know using the boilers, but it does use the boilers as a backup, and everything is computer controlled. They're all both systems are integrated together. Uh, the computer decides when and if the boilers need to come on, um, and then the AC, uh, the, the heat pump reverses in the summertime and becomes the AC system. Uh, each office area has what's called a cassette. It has one or more of these cassettes, which, uh, depending on the size of the office, and they need annual maintenance, as well as the pressures being tested in the compressor area, and, uh, you know, the, the, there's communication between thermostats. It's, like I said, it's a very sophisticated system. In order to keep it operating optimally, it, it requires this annual service that uh, is above the knowledge that we have within my department. Tim, do you have any uh, thoughts? We, uh, unfortunately, we just got the contract this afternoon, and I'm bouncing it around my staff, so I'm hoping to have comments in the morning, um, just things that, you know, make sure they're in there. So I don't have anything to report at the moment. Steve, do we have a window of opportunity to uh, still address this? Uh, since Tim hasn't looked at it, you know, or do we have an urgency on this matter? No, I mean, sooner is better, but it's not urgent. It's a new okay. system. Um so, uh, you know, ideally this isn't really going to need servicing immediately. It would be, you know, uh, from this point forward. Uh, we do have the system there within the building department that's two years old now. The one over at uh, emergency services, I believe, is coming up on two years now. So they would be more, uh, you know, necessary than, than what we have, the new system at Town Hall. 
And based on that, I would recommend that uh, motion to table this you know, resolution uh, to allow our engineers to look at it. Of course, the engineers were very much involved on the contract, the award, and supervising the process. And that would then give them time, you know, perhaps at the next board meeting, um, to uh, give us some advice on, on that, you know, Tim. And Jim, I don't know if you've looked at the contract. So, so I did look at the contract, and I addressed. So this is um, issued um, through Sourcewell. It's one of the uh, um, nationwide buying consortiums. Um, it used to be, I forgot exactly what the, the name was previously. Um, however, um, so under this contract, um, it was uh, Johnson Controls. Right. Uh, carrier and, and some other entity. Um, basically, um, the the agreement is, uh, um, I think it's a, a 15% um, discount off their labor rate, um, the regular labor rate, and then uh, there's a, the parts are at cost. Um, this agreement is based on, is basically for uh, scheduled maintenance. Um, there's a probably a, a four or five page list of, you know, sped, uh, scheduled maintenance on right. this. I think it would be good for the engineers to look at all the equipment. Right. Um, you know, I think there's 28 separate pieces of agreement that are, pieces of equipment that are covered here. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty complex system. Um, and, um, you know, so this is for a regularly scheduled maintenance of 25, um, and then if they come out and make any kind of um, repairs, um, we would pay labor and um, materials for, you know, unscheduled maintenance. Um, I had asked for, for Steve. Um, we just got that back today. Um, there's another option here for premium service, which is 50, roughly 55000 which would be 24-hour a day, five-day a week, um, you know, uh, response to fix any um, any issues that come up I, um, you know I don't think that you know that's necess necessary at least in, the, in this stage I believe it's this is more than what Steve was proposing <laughs> right I mean it's basically double double the price but you would not pay right. you you wouldn't have to pay for labor you know if there were any repairs um, and um, you know, again, it guarantees that, you know, they have a, you know, they would come in the middle of the night if you needed it. Um, I, we don't really have, you know, maybe state police, but. Um, so this system, this system was put in last year, so I don't know why we would go with the, you know, the Cadillac model here. I think that the basic yeah, service yeah, here is 25000 at least for the first couple of years, seems to be more reasonable because it does go up about $1,000 a year when you start looking at 2020 right. through 21 and 22. Um goes from 25 to 26 to 27 but this, right. this seems like it's pretty reasonable now you said 20 thousands in steve's budget you know there was an appropriation i i, I recall that it was a 20 thousand that was appropriated in steve correct yeah. okay it's the last meeting correct no no it was no. appropriated in the budget process last year, last year. okay last well, year's well, budget process so uh, steve came to us either one or one of the last few meetings and he explained we had a, he had a twenty thousand dollar proposal. What's the difference between that proposal and this one? Well, it, yeah, I mean it's a twenty five thousand dollar proposal, as I understand it. Five thousand one hundred and fifteen above what was appropriated in the budget for our planning purpose. So I don't think there's. Yeah, I mean together. It's I, don't, a I don't recall. Uh, I don't recall any other plan that we were talking right. about. So it's always been um, Johnson. Right. They, I, once I learned that they were uh, involved with the purchasing co-op that we are a member of, then it didn't. It wasn't necessary to uh, shop around for this. Um, I will say that the technician that I use with uh, Johnson Controls, I followed from company to company. He's very reliable. He always puts the town to the front of the line when we have an issue. And any issue that I do have is repaired quickly and properly, and I don't have to call them back. I haven't had that experience with some of the other companies that we've used. Do we have to do this service in 2020? 
you know, it's not necessary, but like I said, you might want to, you know, uh, schedule it, scale it back to cover the older systems, you know, that are two years old. I would think they'd be due for some servicing. Um, it might not be absolutely necessary with the new system. Uh, the new system is going to have some period of warranty coverage as well. So I could ask her if she could make that adjustment in the contract. In fact, I was going to suggest to Tim and you, Steve, you know, to look at the warranty and we figure out what, you know, is you know, the dividing line, what we really need, you know, come back then with a, a, a revised recommendation of the board. But for right now, I'd say that's fatal this resolution. If there's a motion, move. Second. Second. Okay. There's a motion. Second. All in favor? In favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. Thank you. And then, you know, we can, uh, Tim, you then take a look at it and uh, coordinate with Steve on that and get back to us uh, for the, uh, the May 10th meeting, okay? Absolutely. Okay. You know, with your recommendation, whether or not we vote you know, to uh, take it off the table. The next resolution is 2020 101. This is a resolution awarding a contract for relocation of gas line at the highway garage. I'll let uh, Steve and Mike and talk about, but this, you'll recall, in the back of the current highway garage, there is a gas line that goes, that's above ground through this rinky dink of a old shed that could fall down any time and cause a major problem. So I view it, and I think others do, as, as an important issue that should be addressed ASAP for health and safety, and so we can also tear down that old shed. Uh, but, uh, right. Tim, why don't you just uh, briefly summarize what's proposed in this uh, resolution uh, for a uh, $17,297,000 uh, bid, low bid, uh, in fact, what the town had authorized the bids uh, to be received, and this is a low bid. So, Tim? Okay, so we, we sort of created a master plan on items to be addressed at the highway department facility, and this was at the top of our list due to the safety uh, potential there. It runs through the roof trusses. Right. The roof is leaking. The trusses look compromised. So uh, it's a no-brainer to remove that situation. So we, we worked with Mike and uh, I think Steve was there too to look at this proposed new route which will put it up and over top of the uh, ceiling way inside and get it out of the way. We had thought about burying it but uh, it's going to be in a tough spot and with all the heavy traffic and heavy loaders and things, it's better to just get it out of the way. So as supervisor said, once the gas line's relocated, it'll allow for the demolition of the failing shed uh, that can make way for, you know, a vision for newer uh, improvements there. Um, and then as a priority, you know, we're working with Steve and Mike on some interior modifications to improve the break room in the facility in the interior portion of the existing uh, building there. And then we're also developing the, the three garage bay concept where the mechanics will have a new bay. So all those things are in sort of working motion and, um, you know, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to present some, some updates on that. So I have a question for Tim. Tim, is that building going to be uh, rebuilt back there, the one that we're tearing down, the three bay? When we so did our walk, pretty through. handy. Yeah, when we did our walkthrough, we determined that, uh, um, you know, you're going to lose a bay uh, to expand the break room. And the one of the limiting factors of the existing shed was the low ceiling height. So what we envisioned was raising that up so that you could get your larger equipment. I think it was a backhoe or something uh, to fit. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one, yes. Yeah. I, I would add, Tim, it's not to expand the break room. There is no break room. It's to <laughs> oh, hole in the building. <laughs> but, you know, the yeah. other thing I will add, with respect to this uh, shed and the pipe, it was one of the items that had been written up several times uh, in the past. So I view this as probably, as Tim said, the priority item that we do need to address because of the safety. There. So, so yeah. Mike, this is... I'm sorry, Dickie. Don't, so... This is funded by the Highway Garage Maintenance, so you'll have enough money to cover the seventeen two ninety seven. Mike, what's that? No. So this is how this is contained within your your um, your fund for the Highway Garage Maintenance. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm all for this one. So if we need a resolution, I'll yes, make we a need a resolution. Would you I just have a quick question. 
Okay. Oh, perhaps I got it. So, Tim, um, uh, is there anything other than uh, running the line inside? I mean, it, that's kind of pricey for a gas line. I mean, is there anything that you guys have to do that's not obvious? I asked that question, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I asked it too. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think our bid, our budget was about fifteen thousand. Uh, we did get three bids. Uh, Seventeen two ninety seven was the low bid. Uh, the next two were twenty one twenty one eight hundred and twenty six four forty. So um, you know, there isn't anything exotic with this mm -hmm. install. It's just that that was the low bid. It was maybe a little high than what we anticipated, but not astronomical. Okay. And they're the only bitch you got, right? So, the three, yeah. You know, yep. So, so as long as uh, everybody's okay, I'll make a motion to approve this uh, resolution twenty twenty one hundred one. Do I have a second? Just on the question, this is uh, a fund expense or is this a a DB? It's an a fund expense. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have a motion and a second. Yes, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Thank you. There, there, just one question, uh, one point. Um, it might be, um, this expense may be reimbursable from CHIPS money. Um, CHIPS money can be used for, you know, certain improvements in the highway garage itself. So uh, potentially you could theoretically get the money out of CHIPS rather than, you know, a fund. Cool. Okay. Well, we can look into that. Based on, I'm sure you know Mike will be able to well spend whatever chips money we may get. So, yep. you know, yeah. at the end of the day, it may not you know, matter. Okay, the next item. Uh, one more question for Tim. I got one question. Go ahead, Tim, sorry. Sure. Yeah. Um, Tim, there is, is somebody going to unhook that uh, electric to that ship you have, so I can get that to the wife or Steve Frazier, or can somebody unhook the, the electric that goes to it? Yeah, I hadn't heard that you needed that done. I can work on that. Yeah, just start look at it, and I can get that shit out of there, just because that's where the build is going to expand on that side, on the mechanic side. Okay, we'll coordinate then with Steve, Mike, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, the okay. next item is resolution 2020-102. This is a resolution authorizing retainer agreement for wetlands delineation services. This is with respect to the pond out at Rockingham. And, uh, you know, Steve, as we heard the last time, is, you know, I had a number of discussions. I think, Jim, you have some thoughts on it as well as to what uh, this, why this is necessary for this uh, consultant for $3,500. Uh, Steve, do you want to discuss at first and then Jim can jump in? Right. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I've been uh, speaking back and forth with the DEC. We've gotten to the point that they've given me a list of items that we need to research through the consultant and provide to the DEC, which would then determine whether or not they would issue us the permit to fill the pond in. Um, it's basically an environmental study, and uh, I believe it's like a topographical study as well to uh, check on the uh, grades over there and whether the stream would be impacted the nearby stream would be impacted by what we're doing with this. And, and we feel that that should not be an issue. So, um, you know, it'd be the next step in moving forward and getting the permit to, to fill the pond. Jim, this is uh, then a requirement in order to consider moving forward? It is. Um, so in order to get the, um, in order to fill the wetland, this is right now shows up on um, the national wetland inventory from, um, New York uh, from uh, the DEC. Um, I don't know. Are you guys able to see the map? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So the square in the middle is the pond. Um, and, you know, in order to, to fill it, we would need a uh, Army Corps of Engineers wetland permit. And uh, we would need a uh, uh, what's called a water quality certification from the New York State DEC um, uh, because it's considered to be a, a, a wet. A, right now, it shows as a regulated wetland. Um, Tim and I had a discussion. There's been recent changes to what's called the waters of the U.S. regarding filling. Um, and um, 
So there's been this because this is not physically connected to the creek, it may not actually qualify as a as a wetland. It might be an isolated wetland, uh, even if it's not a, an isolated wetland. Again, because of the nature of it, um, you know, the the delineation here is going to um, describe the boundaries of the wetland, and then it also looks at how it impacts some of the other s the systems. Um, but as you can see, it, it really kind of chews up a, a good chunk of, of the field. It's, uh, you know, I think pretty recognized as being a, a safety issue um, regarding parking and, you know, little kids, there's a lot of little kids around and things like that. So um, it, we had a discussion at the consultants meeting um, and uh, it, it, it appears that uh, at some point in time it was dug out for for ice skating, um, so I'm curious to know if anybody knows knows about that. But you know, yeah. prior to as I guess Tim was saying, um, you know, prior to the construction of Rockingham subdivision, um, there was no pond there. So um, this was it, it was a it's a man made facility. So North Country Ecological um, Services is going to do all the work we need to do for Steve, so we can make sure we can get. Um, the permits and stuff we need from the DEC in order to be able to drain the pond? Well, they're, they're going to do the, the wetlands component of it, which is in essence, you know, they, they would provide mapping of it where the boundaries of the wetland are and some uh, analysis re with respect to the species and what they call the... The, uh, the landing turtles? Landing turtles. Yeah. The landing turtles <laughs> and... Um, and the the viability—I forgot the terminology. The viability. What's the term that uh, I always use? The whether or not, in essence, how how good, what the quality of the wetlands is. So, um, and that that has to be attached. Uh, you need a you know a certified wetlands biologist to do it. Um, and then the uh, CPL is doing the balance of the permit, um, which is so, some so issues like regarding the fill and, and things like that. So that comes out of the Parkland Trust, the 3,500? Uh, yeah, I believe that's the way we drafted the resolution. And I think Steve said something about there's only certain times of the year, so assuming we get the permits, I think it's what, October through April that you can kind of drain the pond? I don't know if that's the case or not. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if that necessarily would apply here since it's not you know, connected to a... The um, only thing that, that would trigger that, in my opinion right now, would be the uh, turtle inside. Right. Yeah, the turtles, they don't really, they're not active during the fall and winter, so that, that's a common mitigative measure. Okay. Right. If they're there, right? If they're, if there. they're there, correct. Right. And, and that's part of the study, so to the extent they're not there. Yeah, that's right. So um, assuming we get through this and we get our permits to, to empty it, um, is it the thought to just pump it into the stream? Ideally, you're going to have to dewater it. I, I think it's just uh, a, a hole that's intercepted the groundwater. But, um, yeah, okay. you're going to have to try to manage that. Now, I don't know, you know, how how it's going to react. You can't just put a pump in and pump it dry and then fill right. it up with right. the groundwater table. So um, when it goes to be filling in, there's going to have to be some uh, methodology. Uh, right, because then my next question is, um, where do we get the fill to fill that hole? That's an awful lot of film. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful what you put in there, right? Because you got to yes. make sure it's not contaminated. <laughs> right. 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 Well, my hope was to have something in place when the uh, uh, old Hopewell Road uh, work is started because there's going to be a considerable amount of film coming out of that. Well, um, there's going to be a considerable amount of film, a considerable amount of contaminated film. I guess that remains to be seen. Um, you know, the subsoil, I don't, you know, asphalt probably not, but I don't think the subsoil under the road will be contaminated. Well, I think this would be a good discussion for the uh, professional consultant that we're about to hire to uh, look into. Exactly. We're not going to be able to share any. <laughs> I, I agree. Well, the, yeah, I mean, that's, that's an engineering issue. That's not, the wetland biologist isn't going to tell you about the film. Right, he's going to say, go find some dirt. And, and Chris, you know, there will be shoulder, you know, a lot of, you right. know, dirt dug out along the sides of the roads and so forth too so maybe there is maybe there isn't but i agree with bill <laughs> it's beyond us our 
qualification. The number one issue here, we could all agree, is that there's a, right now uh, there is a safety issue that needs to be addressed. I think the best approach here is the one that you've decided to take with this resolution. Let's get a professional, take a look at it. They're going to guide us in the right direction, and then we'll go from there. I'll move it. Okay, there's a I'll motion. Second. Is there a second? I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. Thank you. And uh, then, uh, Tim, you can give us uh, an update you know, a subsequent board meeting on what's happening. I'll give them both. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next resolution is resolution 202103. This is a resolution authorizing change order number two to the Hilltop Well installation contract. I'll let Tim discuss it, but it's uh, to provide some pitless adapters for the three wells. Uh, and this is part of that ongoing you know, contract where uh, we had already approved and they've done significant amount of work. But, you know, Tim, why don't you discuss what it means, uh, how it helps us uh, with respect to those you know, wells getting online? Sure. So, um, you know, the original intent was to drill two new wells and rehab a third well. And as we got into it and we looked at, you know, the age of the existing well that was going to be rehabbed, it was determined that, you know, it'd be better to drill a new well so that the screen is new and all the appurtenances are new. Um, so that occurred and that was change order one by changing a rehab well to drilling a new well. And in working with Timo and Mike Tremper, uh, there were some discussions that maybe it would be better to have the individuals that you know really were responsible for drilling the wells do this last piece of work. This piece of work was gonna happen no matter what uh, we had it originally slated as phase two, um, but I think the sense is, you know, it's it's kind of infrastructure, and I think it's better and made more sense that the people that actually drilled the wells uh, do this work because it's still sort of manipulating the what they call the well head or the top of the well. So uh, the change order explains, you know, it's some one of them is a deep excavation about six and a half feet. You got to get in a hole, cut the casing, weld new pieces and flanges and things. So um, I think the, uh, the change order pretty much explains the scope of work, but it's just really the sequencing and trying to get this done now rather than later. Any questions for Tim? And uh, where this would come out of the water district? You know, the Wappinger Water District. Any any questions? No. Tim, do you have any comments? No, it's you know it's and this is to connect the actual connection of the wells. This is to pre to prep the wells for the connection. So if you think about like a standard well at your house, it's a vertical piece of right. pipe that goes down, and the pitless changes to a horizontal pipe. And so this these connections are in preparation for what we're calling phase two which would be the connection piece. So and then, okay, so then there's a, there will be a separate contract because one of the things is right now, the contract that's out there is for drilling of the wells, right. um, but they are not connected yet, correct, Tim? Correct. We have to right. finalize a design, get the design approved by DOH. And then right. We and and we, you know, in the context of us discussing our various other water, you know, uh, facilities and DEC, and DOH, you know, also funding, you know, this has been actually very positively received you know, by them that we are going ahead with this uh, well site and uh, developing it, you know, and they're looking upon it favorably as part of our overall system, including, you know, the uh, Atlas well site and some of the other things that are going on out there with respect to the creek. So I think it's, you know, an important uh, aspect of this to get these wells uh, online in a uh, you know, timely manner, but we have gotten positive comments. So to that point, um, the funding in essence for these wells, for this well work and also for Meadowwood um, was contemplated um, to come from the buy-in fee that was paid by New York City DEP. Okay. Um, so, you know, this has been a long time in the making. So, you know, going back to 2012, um, you know, this was con the buy-in fee for, for some of the projects that, that came, um, 
you know, in recent years in the water, uh, in the water district, we're earmarked for this construction. And, you know, and ultimately back to the DEP, although we're not able to do anything right now since they're, you know, shut down, but this will help us with respect to the water reserves if we ever to go and negotiate with them for accessing the water out of the aqueduct. It's important to have these reserves, you know, online. So, uh, but I, and so I think overall, this will make a much better system, you know, for the town. And since the DEP actually, in a sense, paid for it, <laughs> that we should be going ahead with it. I, I move it. A second. Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nays or abstentions? Okay, none. The motion passed. Thank you. The uh, you know the next resolution is resolution twenty twenty one zero four. This is the approval of the correspondence log that you have received in your packet. I move it. Motion. I have a second. Oh. Oh. Also breaking up. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, I he believe I heard a motion. Second. second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Uh, I don't have anything else left before uh, any special consideration of new business, and then we would have a motion to go into uh, executive session to discuss uh, the uh, uh, candidates. Any, any other points? I have only one uh, that I'd like to raise. Uh, just mention this is an update. Uh, this is with respect to uh, the... Uh, property you know assessments you know, you've seen that the uh, governor has come out with uh, some uh, you know regulations or rulings with respect to uh, grievance day I've talked with Christian and at this point in time Christian does not believe uh, that there's any need to change any of the days uh, apparently he and Fishkill and and others in our whole area other than Poughkeepsie I think Jim and Milan, or Milan, however you pronounce it, I always forget. But uh, other Milan. than those, uh, Milan, that's right. Other than uh, those, uh, everyone in the county is keeping the status on May 1st, and then the grievance day would, you know, be what, the last Thursday, I think it is, uh, of the month. So Christian's planning to keep that on schedule at this time. If he should see any need for a change of the board you know, on the date, They'll come to us on May the 10th, but at this point in time, it's kind of keeping it as usual. He said the only changes in assessment that he's seen is if there was some sort of change to the property, an upgrade or a new, you know, addition or what have you. But otherwise, there's not going to be any uh, changes generally is what he told I, me. I think Bill would agree May 1st is probably a really good day. Yeah. Yeah. It's Bill's birthday. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So, uh that, that's where we stand on that. I don't have anything else to say at this point other than uh, if nobody else has one, then a motion to go. So in. just to one point for the public, uh, the Board of Assessment Review, the governor's executive order permits the town to hold the Board of Assessment Review remotely. Right. Um, so um, we will be in the process of trying to figure out how to do that. Okay. Um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because uh, – you know, we're going to have to get the information of uh, the people who are filing the grievances, um, but you know, we'll work on that. So um, the public does not have to appear physically in person for anyone who has any concerns about that. So um, if somebody has a grievance to make, um, they can you know work on it. And the way the process works is, you know, you just have to have your grievance in um, by the fourth Tuesday, uh, fourth. It's, we have it on the Thursday, so it'll be the fourth Thursday of the month. Um, and, um, you know, once the, the board can act after that, but um, they have to meet on that day. So, um, like everything else, it's going to be a challenge. Can we add that to our website? Yes. If, yes. if it's yeah. not there already, I'm sure it probably is, but well, if we'll we sure. make sure yeah. that our constituents can see that in the process, please. It's on the assessor page, but we'll also make sure that we uh, highlight that as well, Councilman. Thank okay. you. Very good. Okay, I have a motion to go in the executive session for the oh. uh, purpose of uh, discussing interviewees. I'll make that motion to go in executive session. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. <laughs> uh, Tim, you had sent out a note.